Hi everybody, I'm Jim Shore. Uh, today I want to show you uh, some pieces that I recently uh, completed that uh, have some special meaning for me. They're uh, the Three Kings, the, uh, the Magi of the birth story of, uh, of Jesus Christ. And uh, they're, as you can see, they're, they're large pieces, they're elaborate pieces. There's a lot of detail uh, in them, and they're, they're, uh, there's glitter, and there's uh, be these beautiful jewel tones, and, uh, and some, uh, you know, mi mixed medium, and so forth. So, so I did this um, in this kind of over-the-top way. Uh, as something that, while I frequently do pieces like nativities and that kind of thing, things that are um, Christmas and oriented to uh, the birth story, um, I rarely do them, you know, like extremely large and extremely over the top. This was the beginning of a collection that is going to be like that because the second iteration of this is actually the Holy Family, the crash, you know the things that make up the entire story, and it'll be, it'll be, uh, it'll be more dramatic than I think anything I've done, you know, in the past. One of the reasons that I was so interested in doing these pieces like this is the the story of the Magi has always fascinated me. You know, it's something that we rarely, even in the birth story, you rare, rarely even put a lot of thought on. Uh, you know, the three kings. Followed the star, you know, saw the Christ child, and uh, came up with the gold, frankincense, and myrrh. That's about all you know about. I think there's so much more to that story. You know, uh, magi is a derivative, uh, I think it's the plural of a Greek word, magus, which uh, uh, we, uh, or it's the root of our word magic, magical. These, uh, these were supposed to be mystical, magical uh, people of, of great knowledge. And the, the Latin derivative of that actually has to do with uh, people of knowledge. And uh, the characters themselves, uh, uh, Gaspar, Malchior, and uh, Balthazar, uh, supposedly they were Zoroastrians, uh, who were people that who were uh, sort of almost the scientists of the day. Um, they, uh, they did astrology, and they, they studied the heavens, and uh, that sort of thing, and they made predictions and prophecies and, and that sort of thing based on the movement of the stars and all that kind of stuff. Um, they were probably from the area of uh, what is now Iran. Uh, in those days, it was Persia, so they were, they were, they were Persian, even though the word Magi is originally Greek. I mean, you know, the, most of the Bible was written in, in uh, Aramaic, uh, Hebrew, uh, Greek, or Greek coin, as we all know. <clears throat> and uh, so, anyway, they were, um, well, it's possible that, that they were from India, Arabia, and Persia, a combination there. But anyway, they were from the, that uh, uh, western part moving east towards uh, what is now Israel and uh, where Jerusalem, Bethlehem, and that sort of thing, the core of the story, you know, took place. And the very fact that these three, uh, well, three kings, as they are re referred to, had enough power in, in that time to actually have an audience with, the, with King Herod, uh, that, was no, that was no small feat. You didn't just walk off the street and have an audience with King Herod. You had to have uh, you know, some, someone of great importance. <clears throat> and their entourage that was with them, I mean, they didn't travel alone. It, people like this, I mean, they had a whole, uh, a whole retinue of, uh, of uh, people that uh, traveled along with them to service them, take care of them, uh, care for them, protect them. And, uh, and so forth. So for them to come to make that journey just to see the, this, this child that was foretold uh, in the stars uh, is a very, very unique 
a very unique story. Now, when they got there, you know, one of the things that, uh, that Herod demanded that they come back and report on the whereabouts of this child because he was, um, he was uh, threatened by this supposed king to come. And they ignored him. Now, back in those days, you ignore the king, you got to have some real power or you will end up uh, on the very short end of, uh, you know, uh, of, uh, of the story. And, and yet, these guys were able to do that and, uh, you know, unscathed. And in addition to that, when Jesus' family fled to Egypt upon the edict from Herod, saying that uh, the, 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 you know, the, the male children born in that certain area would, be, would all be killed. Back in those days, you didn't travel just, you know, and, and you, didn't catch, you didn't catch a bus for these peasants, basically, which is what the family truly was, uh, for them to travel like that and then, and then set up household and be maintained uh, for all that time period while Herod was still alive in this foreign country, that took some influence, some support, and I have to think that very possibly these guys and their contacts were responsible for that. Later on through Jesus' life, even Mary, when she with all the traveling that Mary did, you know, you didn't, women particularly didn't travel back then unless they had some means and, uh, and once again, I think the influence of these, uh, of these, uh, these guys maybe had a, played a part in that. I would love to know the full story. But uh, at this point, we'll just have to be content with our speculation and our conjectures. And, uh, uh, but th that's, that's one reason that I was just delighted to do, to do this, because it's such a fascinating part of the story to me. And I wanted it to be something that was you know, not just put on the back burner, but was uh, you know, shown in full, full color, full glory, and, and that sort of thing. And uh, uh, the, next, the next thing I'm gonna be working on in this grouping is the, like I said, the rest of the story. So uh, very shortly, uh, when, that's, when that's finished, it'll be a whole, the whole story will be told in this, in this kind of scale and in this kind of detail and so forth. So it'll be, it'll be an impressive, uh, grouping probably more so than any any uh, nativity or birth story I've told yet uh, and of course I do several every year uh, so anyway that's uh, that's kind of what uh, had me going on this and uh, what influenced me and inspired me that's uh, something I took great pleasure in and I hope uh, that if you go to the site and you go and or where it's shown and of course this ha I might say also this is a very limited edition. We made a very short run of this, and when it's gone, it's gone. And uh, the, some of the pieces that I've, we've uh, got in some of our, our chains of uh, distribution are already gone. So uh, if you're interested in this and uh, you like it, uh, I would, uh, I'd move on it pretty quick. And on one of the front pieces, I think this one right here, there's a place here that it has a plaque that will, will uh, show the fact that it is a, uh, a very limited piece. So anyway, uh, take a look and see what you think, and uh, I think you'll be uh, you'll be pleased with it because this is something that goes beyond just simply doing a, a simple piece of artwork. This had some true meaning to me. Uh, I'm very pleased with it, and uh, I think you will be too. So uh, anyway, go and, and, and take a look, see what you think. All right, well, thank you very much for the time. Uh, as always. Uh, Stay safe and healthy. Uh, God bless you all, and I'll talk, talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.